Okay, here to pick up the package. We can finally, y'all. Shout out to uh, Tim Lee for essentially s sending this so, so fast. Uh, let's uh, crank this bad boy open. See what it do. Also, drop in the comments what camera you think this is um, before it's revealed. I've been needing to just put a solid digital camera back into my life. Uh, look at this thing, man. Beautiful, beautiful. One more reveal, I guess. Uh, one more reveal. Bada bing, bada mother freaking boom, baby. Do you guys think it was a Fuji X106? It's not. It's not. I don't know how this lighting is either. Forgive me for the lighting. Yeah. Oh, oh man, let's uh, let's let me not tease you guys any further. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh snap! Did he get a Q2 monochrome? I did not get a Q2 monochrome. One thing I love about Leica, man, is their packaging. Oh. There it is, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It's real. It's real. Oh, yeah. Look at that thing, man. It's real. I'm actually holding on to this, guys. I am actually holding on to this. Give me two seconds. It's real. Look at it. Oh, baby. Oh, bye-bye. Oh, look at that. When I was in New York, uh, if you didn't check it out, when I checked out the M11 there in the store, I, honestly, I didn't want to like play with it too much, too long, because I didn't want to tease myself. And that was two years ago. Yeah, almost two years ago at this point. I didn't want to tease myself too much. I was just like, I know at some point I'm going to want this camera. And, uh, or I'm going to, you know, get this camera just at some point. I just didn't know when. Uh, I originally, I wanted the black version uh, just to keep like my whole setup black, but Actually, I just I, I folded and went with the silver version because it's cheaper and then I was able to find it used as well I was able to find the black used as well, too But the silver is just cheaper cheaper overall and I was just like Eddie be smart and just save as much money as humanly possible um, But y'all I am excited the weight actually like Does not feel bad. It doesn't feel as heavy as I thought it would be because I know the black ones like some aluminum or something but um yeah, let me, uh, I'm like, I'm just trying to decide if I want to go in the car and do the rest of this real quick. Because I do want to, like, try and take some photos today. So, uh, let me, let me do that. Step outside of here. And I'll just be in a safer environment with this real quick. So that if I drop it, it doesn't drop on the, you know, ground knock on car. <laughs> All right, so I am officially, finally out with the M10. Uh, here, here it is. Here's the setup. I got it kind of browned out, brown strap, brown uh, cold shoe cover, and uh, shutter release button. Today I'm out with the 35 Sumicron uh, V4, but I also have the 50 millimeter on me. So this actually is not my first day out with the camera. Um, I've actually. It's been like a month, uh, a little over a month, and you know, honestly, just life was lifing, and life was in the way, so I haven't been able to just get out and do this, do this video, record my first impressions and everything with the camera. I have been forcing myself to just get out and shoot with this camera every single day, uh, no matter what, not in the city, but as I'm kind of just perusing life, and I've actually 
just been enjoying this so much um, figuring out this camera learning this camera figuring out its ups and downs what it does best and what it doesn't do best um, but here we are So first impressions of this camera in comparison to the uh, M10R, that's what I had before. And the camera that I just absolutely regret selling instantly because I really just enjoyed it. I was just tired of it at the time, but the upgrades are definitely worth it. The main two reasons that I want to go with this are one, the internal storage has 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and then two, the new sensor. Um, just from my testing so far with the new sensor, the metering and the way this camera just kind of exposes your images spaced off the meter is way better than what we were getting before in the M10 line of cameras. Um, those would usually meter off the shutter or have like a type of spot meter, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it just wasn't as accurate. It still was good, it wasn't like bad by any means, but this is just much more accurate and a lot better. Also, the internal storage, 64 gigabytes is amazing. And I think every single camera should have this. I believe the Rico, the Rico did have it. I really wish like Fuji's would have it because it's absolutely clutch. Uh, if you know me, I forget SD cards all the time when I am shooting on digital cameras and being able to just have that internal as a backup and uh, not have to just solely rely on a co on a card. It's like you're getting dual slot uh, shooting at the you know at all times. So. It's really neat, I really enjoy it. Every camera should have it. Those two features of loan are just so much worth the upgrade. But a few other things, I guess. It does have a new base ISO of 64, uh, if you can see that there. And um, that basically allows you to shoot at um, lower apertures and brighter settings and be able to just take advantage of, you know, just more dynamic scenes, uh, I guess, without having to compromise in other ways. The one difference I will say that I'm not like too happy on, but it's not a deal breaker, and it's it's really stupid. It's probably just a nitpick. It's actually the shutter sound. The shutter sound on this camera versus the M10, it's not the same. And then here is the M10. I really wish it was, and I believe that's because the shutter has to close first and then open when it you know takes the photo. That doesn't mean it's slower any means. Um, but that, you know, it is a bonus in a way as well, too, because you can finally shoot uh, in silent mode. You can turn the mechanical shutter off in this camera and shoot with electronic only. So it's like a, it can be a completely quiet shooting experience if you want. So that's nice. But that M10 shutter sound was freaking immaculate. Look at this, look at it. Wow, 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 wow. Holy crap, you gotta get a good picture. So another one of the main reasons on why I picked up the M11 is because I fell in love with my M6 and I fell in love with these lenses, this 35 millimeter um, Sumicron V4 and then and my 50 millimeter dual range Sumicron absolutely love this thing has pretty close focus but I fell in love with these lenses uh, before then I was just using my Ricoh GR3 for the, kind of the majority of my work but last summer I started using these lenses just heavily and the results that I was getting from them that I was seeing from them was just pleasing it was, it was what I wanted it's what I've it's kind of been searching for in terms of just like uniqueness in the image. These lenses kind of just fit what I wanted to do 
when I was out creating perfectly. And essentially I reached a point where I just felt like I don't have a need for digital in my life. So I ended up selling my Ricoh uh, cameras and just used that to fund other camera video gear and whatnot. Um, but I was working a job back in February and I was shooting mostly on film on my M6. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've been seeing me share just so much of it. There's a video and everything coming on those sets of photos soon. But it was in that moment as I was shooting BTS on their project that I came to the conclusion that I just, I need digital. I need a digital counterpart in my life. And I knew for a long time that I wanted to go to, you know, a Leica M system, uh, whether that be the M10 or this M11. And so it wasn't too long after that job, I ended up purchasing, picking up this camera and man, do I really wish I had it on that job. I didn't, I was able to create, you know, what I needed to create with what I had and it came out to look excellent. But for the most part, this camera's awesome. Um, and I absolutely adore it. Secondly, I've just really been wanting to explore new things. Uh, Denver just has not been the most active place because the entire city is under construction and that's kind of just been ruining so much. Uh, so I've had to force myself into, Eddie, step out of your zone of just doing people-based, you know, candid street photography and start exploring something different. And so I've been doing that. Um, and digital has been enabling me to do that more and do it later in the evening, at night, when I don't have to worry just about shooting a 400 speed film or 800 speed film or something like that. Digital enables me to be more creative and to be able to explore things outside of just what I was really locking myself into shooting film exclusively. It's been opening my eyes to just look at things differently and just really appreciate what more is around me besides like people and people-based street photography. So the last reason that I really just want to explore and do different things is that I don't want to niche myself down to some corner because that's not who I am. I'm a creative and curious person and I want to essentially be able to explore those things and not put boundaries on myself uh, and not put those limitations on myself because you know that can lead just to different opportunities. It can show me different things that I'm interested in and where's the growth? in me just simply as a photographer, if I only hold myself to just one standard my entire creative career. Look at that. White on black, black on white. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. If you've seen Rush Hour. Bonnie and Clyde. We gotta do the Jason Momoa. We gotta do the, got my film, got my digital. Shoot them both at the same time. Like of her life.